Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment and in today's video we're going to be making a custom puzzle. Let's get into it. Here's the plan. I'm going to be taking quarter inch clear cast acrylic. I'm going to cut out just the shape of it, uh, the border if you will. I am then going to print a custom design onto the acrylic on the back side so that it's not, uh, you can't feel it from the front. And then I'm going to be using AI to create that image. Once that's done, I'm going to be generating a puzzle design, cutting out the puzzle pieces, and then we'll put it together. With that in mind, I will show you exactly what I'm going to do. So let's go over to the computer. We'll jump into the design generated part of this first, and then we will go through the rest of the process. For the image part of this, I'm going to be using Dolly 2 to generate some kind of image for the project. If you haven't seen it before, you can go to the openai.com, find Dolly 2. I am using this for personal use. So go into that, try it out. I'm not great at the prompts, but I'm going to generate something. So I've already actually done it. If I click on the next tab, you'll see that I prompted it with an evil panda scientist mixing sparkling chemicals in a realistic style. I wanted to do that just to see what would pop up. Pleasantly surprised with the results. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go with this third one that has kind of the orange glow around him because I think it will lend well to the printing process. I've already downloaded that design. So if I jump over to Adobe Illustrator, I've created a cutout puzzle shape. It's going to be 10 inches by 10 inches. So, you know, roughly that big or so. And I'm going to print on it backwards. For that to work, I'm going to have to reflect the image. Now you may be asking yourself why I am actually using two artboards. For the printer process, I am going to be cutting out just the border acrylic. I'm going to be taking that over to the printer and laying it within this red square that I will print onto the printer bed. Once it is in that square, I can then print on the second print job the actual image that I want to use. I'm going to have to do that with the color on the first layer and then white on the second layer so that the white is kind of the backer for that. You'll see that as I print. If I just print the image with no white backer or no backing to it, it will be translucent. You'll be able to see through it. So I want to actually have some uh, opaque depth to that which is why I'm gonna print a white backer. So this does the printer portion of the job. What I need to do for this is I'm going to actually save it as a PDF. So I go to file, save as. I'm going to save this to my UV test prints because that's where I save everything. I've already called it UV printed. It does need to be all of the pages and then just hit save and save the PDF. We'll use this later in the printer software. Now what I want to do is I actually want to send the square over to the laser. So what I'll do is I'll boot up the laser, we'll send this job over to it and cut it out. Now that the material is in the laser and the laser is turned on, I'm going to go ahead and hit print. It is going to be the custom size of my artboard. I am only going to send over page one because that's the one I need to actually use on the laser. So hit print. It'll go to the epilogue dashboard. I'm going to import my vector acrylic quarter inch settings. I am going to drop it down a percent to 7%. So it's gonna be 7% speed, 100% power, and 100% frequency. Go ahead and send that over to the machine and cut that out, and then we will pick it up when it's done.
you'll see this red square on the bed. What I'm going to do is just line up my piece with that square all the way around. Typically for clear acrylic, you need to put some kind of tape on the side so that the auto height beam doesn't shoot straight through it. Another way to do that is to actually take an opaque color acrylic that's the same thickness. I typically stick it right next to it just for the auto height part of this. I'll send it back on the bed. The beam comes right around here. So I'll just line up that piece until the opaque piece lines up with the beam, hit the auto height, and it'll adjust it for me. Now that the acrylic is on the printer, I am going to set up the print job. So in this, I'm going to go to print setup. I do have that artwork selected. I'm gonna to go to my properties and then my layer selection. With the profile I have set up right now, it's going to print the white first, but because I have this backwards, I don't want that to happen. So I actually want the color on the first layer, and then I want the white underbase on the second layer. I don't need the clear because it's gonna be on the back side. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK to this, click OK to the next box, and then I'm going to hit print. Now, there are ways to like mirror print this and everything, but I usually set it all up in the Illustrator software just because it's easier for me. There are multiple ways that you can pull this off. So let's go over, watch it print, and then we'll jump over to the jigsaw part of this. It has been printed, it's on the back of this. You can see the white. I basically have two options from here. Typically what I would do is I would let this sit for a couple of days and let the ink fully cure. So when it comes off the printer, it is cured, but it's not 100% cured. I usually let it sit for a couple of days to do that. Uh, today I'm feeling a little bit impatient, so I'm just gonna throw it on the laser. So we'll see if it has any reaction. That's part of why I wanted to do this project is I've never done a print and then cut on the actual print. I usually cut the material first and then I print on it after. But with a puzzle, I don't wanna line up, you know, 50 pieces or whatever on the printer and get them all lined up just to print on them. So it would be easier to just cut it once it's printed. We're gonna see if that works. I have two options. I can either mask the back of this and then cut it, or I can just leave the front mast and not mask the back. Because I want to, this is kind of a test, I want to see what happens if I just cut through it as it is. Mainly because if I mask this, that means there's a bunch of extra masking I'm going to have to peel off in addition to the front masking. Because this is the front of the puzzle, I'm going to leave that mask to get the best quality that I can. But the back, I won't see a whole lot when I'm using it for my house, so having some marks on the back isn't going to bother me. If this was going to a customer, I would suggest masking off the back and getting the best finish that you can. Now that you've seen this, let's go over to the computer and I'll show you how to get the puzzle generated design. There is a website with a puzzle generator. I will put that in the description below so that you can see that. Before I show you how this tool works, I do wanna mention that I do have a free laser community at lasersmadesimple.com slash community. That's where you can share your projects along the way, what you're working on. If you have problems with something, you can post it there with questions and we do our best to help each other out. And if you're interested, I also have a membership where I do group lives every month talking about different laser topics and business topics as well. You can find that at lasersmadesimple.com slash membership. 
But if you have any questions about either of those, leave those in the comments below and I will do my best to answer all of them. When it comes to using the puzzle generator, you can change what they call the speed, the tab size, and the jitter. I don't typically mess with any of those three. It just doesn't matter to me that much. What really concerns me is the number of tiles. So that's gonna be your number of pieces. And then the overall size. This is designed to be a 10 by 10. I am going to make it slightly bigger than the 10 by 10 piece just to make sure that the ends go all the way to the end. So I'm gonna do 256 by 256. I am going to leave it seven by seven, which means that it's going to be 49 pieces. I'm going to download the SVG. It will save it to my desktop. And I'm just going to throw that into my design folder. Now I'm gonna go over to Illustrator. In Illustrator, I'm going to open up that jigsaw file. And in here, you'll see that it is a full square with all of the pieces. I'm gonna change that to a red color. Or actually, let's make it blue instead. I just want something easier to see than black. All right. I am then going to select just the outer square and delete it. And the reason for that is I already made the square when I cut the shape of my puzzle. So now this will cut just the pieces. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy this and then paste it into my other file. All right. So here I'm going to line it up with my puzzle shape. It should overhang a little bit on every side because I did make it slightly bigger. You can go through and actually align center and everything, but the reason I'm not doing that is I don't wanna move the red border and I'll show you why here in a second. So there is my cut. I'm going to print this over to the laser. And in the epilogue software, what I'm going to do is stick that piece right back where it was. For the blue, I want it to cut the quarter inch material. So it's gonna be that seven speed, 100% power, 100% frequency. And then the red, I'm going to turn off because I've already cut that. Once I have all that done, I'm going to print that over to the machine and we'll cut it out. But this is a way that I can line everything up with my print and I don't need registration dots or anything like that. I'm just using the existing material that I cut it out of to begin with. Now this isn't gonna work for every project, uh, but it does work for these you know, general shape ones. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier. So let's go over and cut out the puzzle. Quick little recap, you will notice that some of these have a brown burn mark on the back. And that's actually the case for a lot of these. So if you are doing for this for a customer, definitely mask the back. I also noticed a couple other things. I, the acrylic must not have been completely clean because you'll see that there's some pieces where the ink didn't adhere quite as well. This is because of something I did, not the printer. But I wanted to at least be real with you and tell you that, you know, things happen when you're experimenting. Same thing here. And it happened on a couple other pieces. One of them actually peeled off some of that print. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, here it is. So this one, actually, I think the heat helped make it bubble more and peel off because it happened to be on a corner. So this piece didn't turn out great. I will say the end result will look kind of messed up in a couple spots, 
But that's the whole point of experimenting is figuring out what you can do to cut corners to improve your speed. I would say that you do need to wait the full time for it to cure. Definitely mask the back. I will make another one of these puzzles in the near future, trying some of those other options and see how that turns out. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and start peeling all of these pieces, which is going to take me a little bit. But when I do peel it, this is the one that has the chunk missing. But overall, the print itself that did stay turned out pretty nice. So let me spend some time and I'll peel all these off. All right, so here are all the pieces. We're gonna spend a little time putting this together and then we'll recap it. It's gonna take a little bit. Here's the final puzzle. So there are some mistakes along the way, but overall it did turn out pretty good. Uh, there are definitely some lessons learned from this. There's a little bit of peeling here. A lot of this is just, I was trying to move too quickly. I need to be a little bit more patient when I'm doing this, make sure I clean the acrylic surface and everything else. This was just me being impatient and that's why it turned out the way it did. But I do like, the design, I do like how it all comes together. Overall, I'm pretty pleased. I am happy with how this project turned out. Like I said, it was a learning experience. There's definitely mistakes in it. That's just what happens when you're experimenting with a new technique or anything else. Don't be afraid to try something new just because there's unknowns to it. Go with it, see what happens. Maybe you'll fail, maybe it'll work, who knows? But it was fun. I do want to make more puzzles. If you do want to see more designs, comment below what kind of designs you want to see. Uh, I can try to do more of the AI generated ones to do cool, quick projects uh, and see what comes out. Now, the puzzle piece part of this is more of the labor intensive, I would say, where you have to mask it, code it, and everything else. But I do like how it turned out. If you did like the video, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so that you know when I come out with new videos. Make sure you check out my Instagram, at Maker Experiment, where I share things along the way. But I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you in the next one.